Welcome to the Idlik Scribbler Show, a community podcast that goes alongside the Idlik Scribbler's blog, which is an objective-driven community platform where you can express your thoughts. And I'm your host, Sheikh Imran, and we are back after a long, long hiatus. But I'll try to be more consistent now with more podcasts and articles. And I've got a handful of things planned, so you can expect a lot of podcasts and projects coming soon. So moving ahead, as the title suggests, today's episode is all about gamifying your life. And to talk about this, please welcome today's guest and a friend of mine, Arkesh Shanoi. Hi, Arkesh. Hey, hey, man. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Arkesh is an expert in microgreens and he also rares butterflies. Can you even imagine that rearing butterflies? And he's, he's the most green person I know. So I thought he'd be a perfect fit for this episode. So Arkesh, if you'd like to introduce yourself and what you do. Well, uh... Thanks for introducing me in like such a flurry manner. Uh, well, <laughs> first of all, thanks for having me here today. I'm very excited. Thank you for coming to the show. Right. So, um, greenifying your life. That's like the best topic I could get to speak on. Because like being a nature lover <laughs> yeah. myself, nature has been almost entirely everything. I do like you know 95% of the times whenever I'm free I'm with my plants or you know going out to take uh, photographs of insects and stuff so nature is a crucial part of your life oh yes i mean in fact it is a crucial part of everyone's life yeah it should that. be it should be it should be actually <laughs> the I most know. important part of any human being's life but yeah sadly uh, we don't see that much oh no no it, so, it's... that's what here to talk about that is what today's topic is which is greenifying your life so we'll be talking about how you can integrate more green in your life how you can add you know more natural aspects to your life and maybe improve your life in the process so that is what we'll be talking about today so before we get ahead into that before we talk more about greenifying your life so i would just like to discuss about the current state of environment on a personal and global level so uh, and obviously our core discussion is greenifying our life so uh, to talk more about that we need to discuss the problems out there all the critical environmental problems out there especially in india and i think according to me uh, the most crucial problems have to be deforestation of forests and the air quality is lowering with india cities being the most polluted cities out there oh, yeah. and our groundwater is depleting natural calamities hit us all the time and the whole ecosystem is crippling acidification of oceans and agriculture is turning unsustainable so what do you have to the state of environment on point <laughs> well start i mean the basic reason of everything that i see is overpopulation i mean we exactly yeah exactly. and the demand for resources increasing there are certain unsustainable ways of utilizing resources that have come up you know we're just exploiting our environment so badly nowadays mm-hmm. we're not giving it a time to you know heal itself like how it used to do so yes yeah population exactly. then we have resource depletion which also leads to unsustainable waste production again that leads to soil degradation yeah. loss of biodiversity and it it's a, it's a chain that has to be broken yeah exactly yeah i mean recently we know how our temperatures are rising i mean all of us can feel it yeah yeah correct everyone has been talking about that yeah i mean we can notice ourselves that our winters are you know warming up it's not as cool as it used to be before mm. we see you know fire yeah. fireflies used to be quite a common sight you know most over most of you know southern parts of india but now it's a very rare sight i see we bet i myself have Yeah, the firefly in my life. I mean, some of my friends have told you know, like remote parts of Kerala or somewhere like that. So yeah, there's lots mm-hmm. of loss of biodiversity, and I mean, with the urbanization, there has been this trend for landscaping, which has you know, like replaced all the original greenery that was there. So correct, yes. Beautification, people, you know, forget the resource part of it. You know, for beautification, they, you know. remove the na- natural native trees that are there and replace it with lawn and exactly and yeah and exactly plants and stuff like that so that that you know introduction of non native species of plants 
you know deprives the natural flora and fauna around of you know their original habit correct it breaks the food chains breaks the food web and all exactly and also i feel there's a misconception in people that uh just because cutting a plant uh, at a tree and replacing it with another plant solves the problem but oh. i don't think that's the i mean solution out there right because people have to understand the concept of ecosystem how uh, there's so many things associated with a single tree uh, whether it's insects the soil or the pathogens whatever is there exactly. so you can't just cut something and i mean you, you plant cut- another small tree and exactly the thing i mean you're cutting a very you know large old tree which is to give you know a, a huge amount of oxygen and you say even if you say you're replacing it with two trees from the time you plant the tree it it's like pretty small so it does not give enough oxygen or you know i'm just taking it exactly considering i mean you know oxygen only but there's like food and all the other stuff to you know link to it replacing mm-hmm, yeah to, you know provide so much to the ecosystem around you replacing it with two you know young trees that are not capable enough already and that and you know exactly, happens yeah. at a slow rate it would still be okay but the rate at which trees are being cut we are the, the young trees exactly. that we plant aren't enough to cope up with you know how much the older trees used to give plus another thing is cutting down native trees and replacing them with you know fast growing Uh, forestry species like let's say eucalyptus and stuff you know you see yeah. all along the road sides banyan trees have been cut because they take you know like lots of place and stuff and they've been replaced yes, by yes. lean eucalyptus trees that grow pretty tall you know firstly they're non native species so they do not provide what the native ecosystem needs and secondly exactly you know exactly. comparing a banyan tree and a eucalyptus there is a huge difference i mean exactly yeah because you know uh, it's not just about the one tree right because there's so many things linked to it for example if there's a banyan tree there might be some specific species that is associated with that banyan tree yeah. any insect or I mean, which might house in that banyan tree you know the mutualistic relation between let's say the, the very typical example of you know fig wasps and the fig tree so the moment yeah exactly you yeah. cut down a fig tree the fig wasps that used to you know depend on that tree have also lost their resource i mean where would they go they need the fig trees to lay eggs and the fig tree needs exactly yeah. these wasps to pollinate them so you are breaking a very important you know cycle or let's say a very important link there in the ecosystem yeah basically by killing the one tree you're killing like lot of yeah, other yeah, things as well yeah exactly So oh, yeah that's the thing and so the question the problem here is overpopulation right yeah but uh, can we just use this overpopulation as a justification for our exploitation well even let's see there are certain countries that are as populated which are you know they've already adopted their self sustaining techniques and stuff so they're not into you know like let's say see india is a developing country right now and there's like a race Yeah. there's a race for you know being the best among the people around because you know in such a popular mm-hmm, country yeah. competition is high even you know let's say industries and stuff so they need to have more resources the one yeah. next door so for that they it, they start producing more than what's needed and for that they need resources more than what's actually needed Correct, that yeah. that's what you know drives the thing so i mean if people you know it's required only it would have cut down the you know damage you done to the environment quite a lot firstly yes but yes. yeah population still wouldn't have you know sufficed if we controlled it like a little bit i feel yeah that's true that's true Well, and again, o- and we also exploit our own resources for others for trade and commerce for to import and yeah, export stuff exactly and in in that process again we have see is not just that resources very when it comes to industries for these import exports there's a lot of you know transport and there's a lot of you know gas yeah, exactly. industries correct correct too many greenhouse gases you know ocean acid- acidification as you said you know in fact 
a uh, coral reef cover like so it's like a chain if one thing starts falling everything else starts falling everything continues. else starts falling now i mean let's say we are doing something in industries you know on the mainland like in let's say central india or you know in somewhere far away from the sea you know we might not even imagine what consequences that industry would have on the ocean you know far away from it i mean an industry produces carbon dioxide somewhere in the middle of the continent and that carbon dioxide you know causes ocean acidification because of you know acid rain and all of that we won't even imagine how uh, an industry somewhere in the mainland of a continent affects the ocean mm-hmm. now with ocean acidification comes you know bleaching of coral reefs you know, coral reefs covering only 0.0025% of the oceanic floor but they generate you know about half of the earth's oxygen and absorb nearly one third of the carbon dioxide okay so, so that's bleaching a crucial of part corals play one of the most important roles on our planet you know for providing oxygen but no one like realizes that exactly and yeah. the rate the rate at which the coral reefs are getting bleached is you know scary i would say <laughs> yeah <laughs> no exactly right Although people are making scary. efforts to save them or to relocate them, but it still isn't enough. I feel. Oh, uh, yeah, it's not enough. But the rate that we are going, I mean, I guess recently I had heard on the news that Greenland has already reached, you know, has it's crossed the point of return. I mean, of mm-hmm. melting of ice. Yeah, yeah, still, correct. Yeah. Just hope that we could get back to you know, we could stop the melting of ice in Greenland, but it has. all it has just crossed the boundary so it's like very difficult to get it back almost next to impossible now the only thing we can do is you know slow it down okay yeah that's want true that sequences all at once yeah so and all these problems are just existent uh, and a uh, few people deny it few people agree but the truth is it it's there it exists and we can see that yeah, it's very clear it. we can experience that and the one solution that always comes up you know to do your part in this is adopting a green lifestyle oh yes green lifestyle and i feel it's i think it's impossible to become 100% green but you know any bit is better than nothing right so you can always start it never too late to start small steps take you to the greater you know correct exactly and it's more of a art right so it's a fun experience as well Right. I mean, when you say greenifying your lifestyle, it's not like something uh, generalized. You know, you can't make a theoretical list out of it. Correct, correct, like yeah. Call. It changes from place to place, and you know, adapting to your situations around, improvising by yourself, trying to give the most greenest footprint you can on the environment is what's needed. You know, around the world right now. Exactly. because if all the people on the planet do their part like contribute a little bit then i think that would make a pretty significant change yes that that would definitely make a significant change i mean see if a person you know counts i did this myself okay like i was every time i used to go buy juice somewhere like i used to i collected my glasses the disposable glasses that i used for yeah. like over a period of one month and the amount of you know disposable waste that i had collected was so huge just 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 the juice glass and the straw that they give it made me realize you know buying one glass that i can you know take to the juice shop and tell him to fill it in that and you know like reuse it every time i can save so much of waste from going into the landfills correct yeah that's true that's true there's so much waste everywhere Yeah, you know, waste is one thing, and the resources taken in to produce it again is another. I mean, yeah, people say exactly. synthetic products can be used in the future. Like, let's say we run out of food, we can mm. eat lab food, like or lab cultured food or something like that. Like yeah. what you're talking about, basically, like as a replacement to you know, and uh, meat. They're creating meat in the lab and stuff. But yeah, yeah even it's. It's a fact that even synthetic products come from natural resources. Exactly. We're just the adding most... more steps to it. We're just adding exactly. more steps. Exactly. We're just making the process a little bit longer and adding more steps in between. But finally, synthetic products need natural resources, and you know, most importantly, being our fossil fuels like petroleum. There's nothing that goes without you know electricity and energy. Exactly. And, yeah. 
majority of that comes from our fossil fuels so yeah even renewable we talk about renewable resources like our let's say solar energy and wind energy yeah all of that yes is is renewable in a true sense but then there are some forms of energy which are said to be renewable like let's say you know tidal energy not not yeah tidal energy yeah. or energy from you know the the water flowing in the rivers you know that kind of energy the dams the hydroelectric energies and stuff yeah but even these renewable resources are at a risk as some need like very long periods to be replenished and Correct. with us depleting our rivers there won't i mean that that can't be considered a renewable resource if we are depleting the very source of the resource Hell, exactly that's point. true that's true there's no point in building a dam if there's no water at all exactly so, so, so you it, can't get any even this yeah i mean well as you said you know if people get in you know a little bit green in their own life it can make a huge impact because you know 50 to 80% of the land the materials the water that we have it's used for household consumption correct yeah so though most of us you know when we think of pollution we first see you know images of industries and vehicles and stuff more household consumption has a much greater impact than that so you know people exactly. you know buy yeah, buy wisely think a lot exactly buying wisely cutting down on you know consumption and waste production mm. it would definitely ensure you know our resources last longer so yeah, coming to that Very we have yeah we have recycling where you know producing new goods always requires you know much more energy well uh, i mean recycling needs only a fraction of it yeah correct so if we get responsible on what we are buying you know what we are using and what we are throwing can we use it again before throwing is there any other use we can have with it so that that's going to reduce a lot of waste from our side as well as consumption correct and the point is i feel everyone knows about this but the only thing is people don't want to put in efforts ah exactly yeah. i mean so we can't that's another exactly part blame everyone for that also cuz like the busy life not lives everyone we have but still you know uh, i don't know why but yeah it it is possible to cut down on things oh it's very possible it's just about comfort so people yeah, comfort. choose not to do that exactly i mean who would who would want to go you know two steps into washing that glass to reuse it again you know easier than that is just using a disposable glass and throwing it off in the yeah. trash can no one exactly even, exactly need to do anything But- else otherwise also i also you... maybe people have this uh, behavior because i feel they're not educated enough about the things happening around the world about how uh, nature is being harmed and how life yeah. is depending on this whole cycle and how we're destroying a crucial part of it so i feel if people uh, got to see more of it and to realize more of it then i feel they w- they could start working on themselves maybe th- even that's possible yeah that is possible you know and even some people who know all of this they don't know what they can do as a part hmm, you know, yeah, of true, their life correct. to improve that's correct. it i mean they think or when you say pollution again as i said the first thing you see is industries so correct people who know all the impact that's going on you know feel as if it's just the industries that are causing it and like they have no hand in it kind of a thing yeah and they don't know how they can you know do their their small bits to improvise correct, all of correct. that exactly so so this was about that so so if, what would you like to say about the importance of leading a green lifestyle well importance of leading a green lifestyle uh, you know i'm done talking That's about the environmental aspects so let me get down to let's say our own health benefits right now correct yeah that's that's the most important thing i feel exactly. because i feel it's human psychology that unless we are not affected by something or if we don't see a personal benefit in it we don't get into that <laughs> right exactly i mean it's when our own uh, when um, radio communication was invented no one you know 
thought about what's happening in nature because of the radio waves passing through and stuff you know birds were dying and stuff but then yeah yeah when people understood about the effects of you know ionizing radiation and stuff on humans that's when they actually thought okay this is dangerous we'll have to do something exactly, about exactly exactly that's, that's true that's true so yeah that is a thing you know and also i feel you know people look at nature you know some of them i won't say all of them from an economic point of view only like why should we save nature because resources we need resources and nature gives us resources yeah. and we should look at nature for the beauty it is in itself for its very yeah. existence nature is something we cannot reconstruct by ourselves it's a exactly, process yeah. that, you know it's a process that's going on so many years and if the balance of nature is broken we can't create it artificially ourselves again exactly yeah you can't reverse the process you can't go back yeah i mean to some extent right now we are still in the phase where we can reverse what we've done but somewhere in the future we'll reach a point from where we cannot go back again and okay, that true. that's a very sad situation to think of i mean yeah that's why i think uh, people are more aware than ever in 2020 people are being uh, very vocal about this oh, yeah so that, that of... is people are being very vocal yeah i'm seeing everywhere people you know raising awareness and stuff so exactly that's a very exactly. good thing to say yeah and also i feel by leading a green life uh, you also save money and because your food is healthy you're conserving your water you're conserving your electricity so yes you're, you're, you're conserving a lot of stuff you're conserving i mean you're reusing stuff that you have which means you're not buying exactly. more you know? and that that's one part of it and if we come to you know like gardening at home we can say if we have a garden ourselves at home if we're growing our own you know food in the process of buying food again we have been we have been you know firstly the farmers you know sometimes when they produce on a large scale when there's a large demand lots of fertilizers are used pesticides are used so that harms the yeah. environment then on the lot of you know packaging that takes a lot of transportation that takes transportation place. yeah exactly so so that makes the cost of food higher as it reaches you correct yeah so growing your own food firstly reduces cost of food yes i mean it reduces i mean it makes it easier to get healthier food you don't have to spend much on it too plus exactly. looking from exactly. the health benefit point of it not only are you eating healthy food but also gardening itself is a mental therapy exactly yeah true yeah exactly so gardening is considered one of the best stress relievers correct yeah and, that's true uh, i personally feel i mean amidst all of the you know pressures we had with studies and stuff and gardening was the one thing i would always go to you know to release all of that you know stress and tension and stuff every time i'm with plants it's like a this, different this is a happy world all together one of our older episodes uh, which i did on mental health so mm-hmm. uh, we talked about this how plants and gardening can you know heal you basically mentally and physically as well right so there's that advantage as well and also by g- being green you also reduce the pollution levels at least around you yeah around you and as well as far away because you're getting less food from you know far away places correct right? correct yeah Even exactly you're not going you know buying local produce you know rather than going from for you know produce that been imported from far away that in itself leaves a greener you know footprint exactly exactly Because and i'll tell you an interesting statistic from world health organization so uh-huh. uh, there is a report that said 13 million deaths annually occur and almost a quarter of all the diseases worldwide are due to environmental causes which could be avoided or prevented right <laughs> well i don't know what other ways environment will find to teach us our lesson exactly exactly that's good <laughs> so basically by if i have to summarize by you know leading a green lifestyle you can improve your physical aspects of life and also your non physical aspects of life and your surroundings so 
yeah so what could be a better deal than that exactly so since we spoke about greenifying our lives its importance so if you had to talk about integrating the green part the green aspect plants into a life from scratch because a lot of people don't know about plants right they don't have any experience with growing plants or taking care of them or their advantages they they have no idea at all so so how do you get into this lifestyle from scratch what would you suggest see the first thing i would like to say is um when people talk about you know gardening the first thing that comes into mind is you know all those fancy uh, pots and you know tools mm-hmm. and you know correct yeah nutrient soils and you know high seeds that are far, you know flowering seeds brought from far away places and stuff like that but gardening need not be that fancy and uh, i mean it's become a kind of trend that says gardening always has to look fancy kind gardening is a fancy thing i mean gardening is definitely fancy but then you don't need to have all the sophisticated tools and stuff to garden exactly gardening can exactly. be done with the basic stuff you have around you i mean you don't even need pots for that matter anything. you don't even need anything for gardening exactly you just need any kind of container some yeah. soil and any seeds maybe you don't even need to buy seeds seeds that you find exactly. in the kitchen you can start with let's say and if you need uh, manure yeah. and stuff you have you have that readily available at your home you basically cut your vegetable peels fruits and exactly. all that you just have to compost just, them just just a bucket just a bucket where you dump your green waste and alternate it with layers of you know dry waste let's say dry leaves or you know cardboard you exactly, have a yeah. basic compost setup right there not only exactly, that yeah. you come nutrients and fertilizers the water after washing your rice and pulses then yeah. uh, your onion and garlic peels you know soaking onion and garlic peels in water and using that water. liquid yeah correct that is also you know a great fertilizer so it's all around you you just need you know that's how i started you know gardening in fact when i was very small just those trays you get your mushrooms in you know that's where i started filling in soil and putting some mustard seeds and, it look okay. pretty when they grow and so that's how you can start and yeah that's the thing thinking about all the specific thing you just need to start right and yeah, as you so once you going your find ways of managing yeah. and growing plants for me for me gardening has always been improvising you know moving one step correct yeah, exactly and you know i can tell you once you start gardening once you get into it you won't feel like getting out of it it's like an addiction <laughs> you exactly. always want to do more and more and correct, the more correct, you do the better the better it is exactly. not only for you for the environment for everyone yeah. in fact correct correct then also if someone is hesitant about entering this and if they think it's tough for them I, they can usually start with you know smaller and easy to grow plants i feel yes because I mean, uh, it lot always need to start high you know because uh, he might a person might be entering this field for the first time and he might go for growing bonsai yeah. and stuff i feel that be really difficult <laughs> yeah. i have uh, i have seen like lot of people who are just, you know just starting gardening and they you know look at videos and stuff and they start with stuff like you know succulents and bonsai correct 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 yeah plants. and then i mean it's not that easy to you know maintain all of those yeah, kind of things a lot of management practices are going to be a starter gardening being someone exactly. who's starting new so that kind of lets them down you know getting in such difficult plants in right at the beginning right. i'm i'm I mean, i'm not saying it's impossible to do that i mean but still that kind of lets them down i rather i would suggest maybe go step by step start with seeds you find in your kitchen you know mustard is very easy to grow as greens methi fenugreek is very easy to grow in exactly yeah so get starting up with those you know in pots first if you have a piece of land it's even better i mean you can start with chilies you know the red chilies that you have mm. if they're not fried of course the dry red chilies that you get usually those seeds germinate well too and you get like chilies within a month and a half or two so starting with such simple plants usually encourages you to grow more and more rather than starting with the bigger stuff yeah that's true that's true all also, you need is a small box 
Yeah, That's all it. you need is a small box, any kind of box, you know. The, yeah. Any the the trays you get your biscuits in or your, your mushroom that is also fine. Or maybe you you have disposable cups when you go to some juice shop, you can you know grow plants in that. Yeah. Any kind of broken you know boxes that you have, maybe you have a airtight box and the lid broke, you can use the box without the lid to grow plants in it. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we del- we order food and we get food and plastic containers yeah. and all that. So there's like lots of containers around you, and and it's yeah. better if you're reusing containers because you're reducing waste in that way too. Exactly. Exactly. Correct. All you need to do is start. Basically, that's it. Once you start, all you will keep finding things on your own. Yeah, and uh, never give up if your plant like if you're not successful in the first two or three tries because it's gardening and it's nature. It's okay. uh, yeah true. It takes some time to you know understand the the process is happening sometimes, but yes, there's nothing called a green thumb. I would say I mean because everyone can do it. It's nothing. Okay. Like yeah, that's person. true. And even it's, if things go wrong, I feel that's a good thing because uh you will end up uh, you know searching about it. You'll end up learning something new. Well, so what more about it? Exactly. And yeah. you know, with that, you you kind of start experimenting yourself too. So exactly, yeah. Gives so that gets you more into the field, actually. So exactly, it gets you much deeper into it. So that's all you need to basically start a home garden or any you know yeah. get a gardening experience. You know, so also if, maybe if you want uh, something of let's say medical qualities, we have the tulsi plant, which is pretty tulsi easy plant. to grow. Yeah, it, I feel like every Indian household has a tulsi plant. Yeah, I mean, again, it has lots of uses too. So if you have like a small garden and you just want a few plants, you're not aiming for a vegetable garden as such. You can have a few tulsi plants, some aloe veras, let's say some giloys. All exactly, these are, exactly. have have like medicinal uses also, and you know you can daily harvest little bit and things. so it's pretty easy to maintain also these things yeah so talking about maintenance so what would you suggest to manage a home garden with minimum efforts and time because uh, the current generation is busy right the constantly traveling the moving the working uh, the moving from one part of the town to the other the traveling internationally nationally so people are busy basically so what what tips would you give to manage their home gardens with you know minimum efforts and time minimum efforts and time okay so if we say um there are people who are not at home long enough to take care of their plants let's say people who keep traveling a lot as you said internationally but they're back home for like let's say a week or two and they're off to another trip so yeah. instead of having plants that you know take a long time to grow let's say from seed to fruit we, there are microgreens Hmm. that yeah. is something you can grow you know within a span of a week when you're back home maybe so i mean you can harvest them within 7 days so you don't have to worry about watering the plants when you go back again after a week because you've harvested your fruit already and when you come back again you can grow your next batch so microgreens would be a way for that and if you, if there are people who let's say stay at home but you know go for work and come back late and have are pretty busy and have less time for that gardening requires let's say about it, it's almost just watering every day that it needs and sunlight yeah. correct and yeah maybe once in two weeks or something you might require a little bit cleaning here and there on a weekend but yeah it, it, it isn't as demanding as it seems because you're not running a farm where you have to you know exactly yeah it's just a small part <laughs> it's a, it's a few pots here and there that you keep even if you have a large terrace garden let's say there is not much i mean there's not as much input needed as a farm or something when people think of you know growing food you know simple vegetables I mean, maybe sometimes you'll need to prune them a little bit but then yeah otherwise if you keep your things ready like a watering schedule every day maybe after you come from work or come from college or somewhere just water your plants once and I guess that's it. You need once a while. You'll have to clean the pots, maybe. You know, 
and maybe you can also go for succulents like jade yeah succulents is another thing if you're looking for that kind of plants jade and stuff in fact they need very less watering to i mean maybe once in 3 days you have to water them yeah so it's just that plants need a bright a, a spot where they get enough sunlight according to their needs that's it i mean and then the watering schedule depends on what kind of plant you have correct sir because as you said earlier garden is gardening is not something you know general so the way uh, it yes, varies from person to person yeah you have to you know get used to what plant you have and what place you're living in and what kind of environment you have around correct correct that's correct correct so that was about managing your home garden with you no know, minimum efforts in time and mm-hmm. also i wanted to ask about this you know currently there has been this trending term which is detoxifying using plants you know and plants for healing uh it has been trending a lot people are also selling plants potted plants in the name of detoxification and all that so what do you have to say about that how can plants improve your quality of life at home well uh going back to ancient india i would say before the western medicine came in plants were what was used as medication all all along the way and uh yeah. they've been a very integral role in keeping people healthy and uh yeah plants are known for their you know, detoxing properties like as i just said tulsi people have asthma colds cough you know flu sore throats you know, respiratory diseases basically tulsi is one of the great herbs you know you can have that as a tea or maybe just a few leaves in the morning and coming to skin diseases aloe vera is called the miracle plant of skin diseases yeah. for thousands of years people have been using it to heal the skin also for digestive problems sometimes you know dandruff and minor burns also giloy yeah. amritbal tinospora cordifolia that's giloy that has yeah. also been used in for indian medicine since a long time as you know antioxidants and a uh, giloy mm-hmm. tea one cup of giloy tea in the evening has lots of antioxidizing properties also in our food itself you know in indian food there are lots of herbs and spices that we use that have a lot of medicinal values like you know turmeric ginger garlic you know growing these in your garden like growing let's say garlic and onion it's pretty easy to grow in pots yeah so they they can they not only you know they not only detox you they also detox the soil in fact i mean they're such potent you know antifungals and antibacterials they keep the soil clean if you you know drench the soil with garlic peel water you know the peel water i'm i'm not talking about the clove itself just the peel mm, can act yeah. as an antifungal so having these in your diet can detox yourself you know to a great extent so yeah there are yeah, lots of plants like this that you get but yeah i would say the trend of detox it's um let's say people have started to get in plants that are non native to india again okay so yeah they get, exactly they get plants that are not originally found in india in the name of you know detox and you know healthifying and herbs to some extent used as medicine these things are fine but i feel uh, firstly they're not meant for an environment in india if they don't grow originally here yeah sometimes they go invasive to around but yeah each plant has the most potent effect if they're in their own environment the original environment where they evolved in so correct yeah that's correct rather than like i would i would say rather than looking at what's um, going around in i'm just, just quoting an example going around in the western world let's say people look at that and try to incorporate that here instead we should go back to our roots that we have going on from ancient india and the plants they were using the herbs they were using and try to incorporate those in your diet or in your garden or everywhere and also people say uh, people have a lot of plants at home uh, which apparently cleanse the air what do you have to say about that 
Oh, well, yes, there are certain plants that do that. I mean, they say snake plants and erica palms. They purify yeah, the correct. air, they remove volatile organic compounds. To a certain extent, yes, they do. But uh, for an actual heavy impact of that, you'll need to have a large, large number of plants. Exactly. Actually... You can't just pot oh, a single plant yeah. and a expect plant to not do it. Yeah, exactly. Having one snake plant in no one or another. That's that's not going to do much of an impact. You know, I would rather suggest. Um, let's say let's say you don't have the time to garden yourself, or you don't have enough space to have enough plants at home. Yeah, you could practice guerrilla gardening. You know, guerrilla gardening is basically growing plants in spaces that you see, you know, barren. Yeah, it's basically like you. You uh, let's say you ate a fruit today. Let's say you ate an orange, and mm-hmm. you cut some lemon for something. You have a couple of seeds collected, basically fruit seeds or yeah. any kinds of seeds. Now you're going in a car somewhere on the highway, and you see a barren land there. You just disperse your seeds there. Okay. Yeah. And nature takes care of it itself. I mean that that's how you can. that's a very small step you can say but that if if the trees i wouldn't say all of them will grow up to you know be big enough to fruit but the ones that do they will not only you know provide oxygen or whatever they will they will green up the road or whatever you know one two trees is enough for birds to get food from yeah that's correct we're basically helping in you know the seed dispersal part which usually birds and exactly. animals do any kinds of you know you can make seed bombs in fact seed bombs basically just covering up your seed in a mud ball and whenever you go somewhere just throw them out of the window the mud ball you know protects the seeds to quite an extent till it germinates yeah. so that kind of gardening can you know actually do something no yeah that's actually a great idea at least because if you can't grow a garden at home you at least yeah. you know propagating plants somewhere else yeah i mean even if you have plants at home and let's say produce quite a few seeds and yeah you can dispose the extra seeds and disperse it and yeah could it grow up to be a integral part of the environment around yeah so that was about the healing and detox aspect of plants so now the most important question you know with home gardens and especially since we're in lockdown right now everyone is at home they got a lot of time uh, to spend and they can definitely you know learn and uh, spend this time gardening so so what would you like to say about you know adopting a part to sustainability right and also you know maintaining a subsistence subsistence level of lifestyle at home using home gardens well being in this uh, situation right now everyone stuck at home as you said um that's when people kind of like realize the importance of having a garden i mean if you actually see the garden supply sales in india it's skyrocketed since the lockdowns have begun because exactly, you know, everybody is yeah. at home it's not just that they want to do something and that's why they start gardening but also growing their own food people have started realizing the need for it especially when you don't get food that is safe enough to eat outside right now with all the correct yeah you know adulteration and you know all the insecticides and pesticide sprays that they have correct yeah and there's a lot of diseases that, that are being spread yeah so growing at home it's it's like a cycle you know once you start growing something you save the seeds from the same harvest that you have and regrow them in the pots yeah. and you know i would i would actually suggest more of a mixed gardening type like you have a garden you can have a single large pot and uh, i mean i'm talking for you know keeping the soil fertile if you grow the same kind of plant like as we do in the farms you know monoculture is it destroys the soil basically same Correct, thing with yeah. your pot your pot is a smaller part of land so let's yeah. say if you grow one tomato plant in a pot growing some peas around it maybe and growing yeah. maybe one or two garlic bulbs around it it's going to keep the soil free from pests it's going to keep you know distribute all the nutrients that are you know needed like in a Correct. broader way yeah then just removing the very particular nutrients from the soil yeah it won't deplete a certain mineral nutrient 
I wasn't getting the word yet deplete. So yeah, that's the thing. And you know, talking about le- buying less inputs. You know, again, fertilizers. If you have a soil that you're keeping rich with microbes, you know, like adding micro boosters. You know, citrus peel teas. You have your uh, orange peels and lemon peels, Mosambi peels. Yeah. Chopping them up into small pieces, putting them in bottles of water with you know, let's say one spoon of jaggery or molasses. Yeah. Keeping the bottle closed for a few days and then using this to water your plants, it boosts the microbes in your soil. Yeah. And these microbes not only break down the organic matter that you add in, but also you know help to maintain the soil structure. They add nutrients to the soil, and exactly it becomes of... a kind of ecosystem over there, right? Because the plant exactly. and microbes support each other, it and creates, the process it creates an ecosystem in your pot. Exactly, yeah. So correct. That you need that you need a soil that is living. I would say to have an actual healthy garden. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. and for those of you who don't know what subsistence farming is it's basically growing food for your own self to satisfy your own needs yeah and it and it's uh, coming to that it said that you know a person you know if it's for a single person he needs about 100 square feet place to grow all the food he needs for the whole year yeah correct <laughs> so let's say i mean per person because you're starting a garden it takes you know 100 square feet per person but as you increase the number of people you have the number the 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 space of land required per person reduces by like say if you have like a family of four you need maybe 350 square feet of area yeah and a continuous exactly. you know gardening structure yeah it could, it could you can it's actually a great family activity if you think about it if all of you are casually working like an hour or two oh, every yeah. day on your small field or we can work in the garden maybe Yeah. Oh, weekend nights, you know, dinner in the garden where you're exactly yeah. Fresh so it fresh also fresh. adds that aesthetic value as well. Exactly, and and it's a different feeling altogether when you're eating your own hard work. Exactly, that, that exactly. That satisfaction, right. something. And and yeah. on top of that, you know, it's safe. It's one hundred percent safe because oh, you've yes. used natural products, natural techniques. You've grown it on your own, so you know it's I mean, safe. Which they used they used to say an apple a day keeps a doctor away but right now the situation is i would say the yeah. other way around god knows what Correct. they put on that apple <laughs> yeah so <laughs> exactly exactly so It's people don't day. trust food outside these days you know all the vegetables and fruits because uh, it's obvious because it's uh, there's a commercial aspect to it and we all know what happens when there's a commercial aspect associated with something you know people want to grow fast grow more in less time so for that you'll use you know unnatural inputs which is obviously yeah. harmful to us exactly and you know growing it yourself you know what you're putting in it you know exactly I mean, yeah. if 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 you have like your neighbors also growing stuff like this if there's a community of people who are you know mm, yeah like organic terrace gardening or maybe you have a community garden you you end yeah. up you know sharing your seeds you end up sharing your produce and, it's it's a community activity too it helps you show, socialize around you know maybe once in a while once a month outdoor uh, dinner together with everyone uh, cooking outdoor itself with the produce from the garden it it's a it's a very delightful experience i would say <laughs> exactly yeah that's correct and i feel if everyone adopts subsistence farming at home you know if not to satisfy their complete needs like at least to assess their current uh, f- uh food availability i think that would uh, impact the environment a lot in a positive way and also themselves because they'd also be saving money and eating healthier yeah and also i mean we're shifting from the farm based monoculture to a mixed yeah. culture that we're doing ourselves which increases biodiversity i mean if you have let's say lots of acres of rice fields around you won't find fruit eating birds there I and mean, fruit eating fruit eating birds have no food there so exactly yeah they usually they usually disappear from that region while if you have let's say a food forest like i would love to call it a food forest you have all kinds of different trees different plants everything growing together so it not only gives you provides you 
what you need but also provide the environment what it needs exactly exactly and another so it's all about be... creating an ecosystem exactly and you know if you've just started your garden if you want to attract pollinators if you want to attract these kinds of you know biodiversity around you i guess maybe uh, let's say you have fruit at home that has gone spoiled you know instead of just throwing it put it up in a bowl and leave it outside you know maybe some birds would like love to have it maybe some yeah. insects will come and feed on it exactly. bees bees in fact love to uh, sip on the sap from fruits that are over ripe that we usually yeah. tend not to eat yeah, correct you're keeping yeah. a bowl of water outside you know in your garden somewhere it attracts all kinds of biodiversity around you to your garden yeah these tiny actions help the environment a lot exactly and not only the environment i mean it gives us back a lot too they help us pollinating exactly, yeah. our plants they help dispersing Good. seeds around so and it's who, all who wouldn't like who wouldn't like a house that you know the whole day you can hear chirping of birds around the exactly yeah around, butterflies around people are spending a lot for that these days <laughs> yeah people you know it should be so something that be everywhere basically <laughs> exactly they they say let's go for a vacation where do we go somewhere yeah go. exactly it be around you <laughs> it's not a thing you should go on a vacation for exactly yeah that's what they'll go on vacations they'll buy you know uh, fancy advertised organic food the name of natural yeah. when, when it's simple enough to grow it yourself exactly yeah all you need to do is put some efforts and start the journey that's it and yeah. you don't have to do anything yeah. after that it all just take on yeah step by step it all comes together by itself and exactly yeah start, uh, i don't think anyone would actually want to go back exactly yeah it, because there's no cons at all i don't see any cons at all mhm yep it's just it, pros it's a very it's a very satisfying thing to do i would say yeah and it adds so much aesthetic value as well so much nutritional value and so many advantages that we spoke about yep i mean you know you can you know about the trends going on about moringa powder i mean people have been buying this powder a lot it, it comes you know in small packs that are pretty expensive right now and it's supposed to be you know something that very healthy you add a spoon to your food what it is uh, exactly exactly drumstick yeah drumstick powder i mean drumstick trees used to be everywhere around it's correct just, yeah drumstick leaves the powder but when when it comes you know from the it is what we used to do in india self for once it, it comes from the western side in fancy packages and in fancy boxes mm-hmm, yeah that's Correct, when yeah. people really something fancy <laughs> i mean it's something exactly, yeah nice good so you just need to have that pers- perception of looking around and identifying things making you know them turning them into something natural <laughs> greenifying it, it because at to enter this lifestyle i feel you don't even need to invest anything because everything is around you for free everything yeah From, you go out you get soil you you'll get you eat fruits and vegetables any day you have like you have a million plastic containers in your house anyway so yeah. and uh, you don't need any fertilizer inputs if you know how to you know make your own teas like i told you the garlic peel the onion peel banana peel teas banana yeah, yeah exactly that's true bananas bananas available everywhere everyone has it at home so just the yeah, so, banana soak it in water for 24 hours strain it in water your plants whether it's a it's a great potassium fertilizer it adds calcium to your soil is rich with nitrogen and the sugars it contains also boost your microbes in the soil exactly so yeah add any artificial you know soil amendments something for that too no according to me this is what i always refer to it as throwing these away is like throwing away gold that is what it is for me <laughs> yes i mean compost is called black gold you know is yeah, one yeah. of the black golds so Correct. it is definitely something that's very valuable i mean it just so how ignorant people are like you're throwing away whatever is available at home and at the same time you're spending thousands of rupees to buy something that you could have done on your own with lesser efforts no, I mean, exactly with 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 people talking about you know uh, giving up on plastics and buying hmm. you know, glass bottles and yeah. wooden utensils and stuff like that clay utensils what 
is happening is people are buying all of these things and the already i mean whatever they already have which is made of plastic even though it can be still used they throw it away yeah i mean you have is switching yourself to avoid plastic does not mean you throw what you already have exactly if you yeah. already exactly. have something which can still be used use it till you can no more use it and then maybe you can replace it with something that you know nature nat- exactly nature friendly and so, by the time it reaches that stage you would have prevented using lot of uh, other unnecessary things as well yeah exactly i mean just for the sake of you know avoiding plastic people just throw away all the plastic stuff they already have creating more waste even though it can be used again and buying exactly. new things spending more on buying the eco friendly and green products exactly so this brings me to the question like what tips would you like to give to you know reduce recycle and reuse well cloth bags and all of that is a pretty common thing around but i would i would actually like to uh bring this to note that I mean, one of my friends uh actually told me about this and looking at it i was actually shocked you know i mean all of us as students use pens you know gel pens and yeah let's say in a week you know when we are in class we have lots to write maybe we use two pens a week you know gel pen yeah so every week we are adding plastic that is equivalent to two pens and there are lots and lots of students who are using two pens per week yeah it seems a very small amount it's just two per person but when you see the number of students who are using two see <laughs> that that makes yeah. a huge difference just switching exactly. to an ink pen instead yeah where you refill the ink and not throw away the plastic body every time mm-hmm. that's yeah. going to save lots and lots of plastic just by Correct. switching that pen that's of true. yours exactly just yeah. from switching from a gel pen to an ink pen you're saving lots of plastic exactly and that's good it's a very very small step i mean there are there are lots of things you can switch that that that's actually pretty big you know like like compared to a pen it it's a huge it's a bigger scale so if a pen mm-hmm. can do so much a bigger step you take can do much much more exactly like, I mean, yeah. let's 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 take gardening itself you know people say gardening eco friendly and they buy plastic pots so in yeah, the plastic exactly, pot yeah. buy something that's made out of terracotta maybe which hmm, you know yeah. even if it Part breaks or you yeah. can powder it and mix it up with your soil again exactly yeah so something like that and when it comes to i would say reuse reduce recycle the three r's of uh, reuse we've already discussed about reduce also i would i would also um you know talk about upcycling rather than recycling recycling is converting it to its original form to be used again but upcycling is using the material that you no longer have any you know use of to make something that you have a use of like let's say milk yeah. carton correct uh, yeah milk cartons can be just you know reused as plant pots if you cut off the top if you cut up exactly, the yeah. handles it can become you know garden tools so to start a garden you don't even need to you know buy equipment you can upcycle all these kind of things you know maybe you have uh, let's say something uh, let's say you have an old broom or something that's made out of you know wood and you have the long yeah. stick and the, the broom stick is you know spoiled you can no longer use it you can you know use the stick as a gardening tool as simple as that yeah good yeah exactly yeah thing more to garden than let's say a stick to dig so such small things you know upcycling makes a lot of difference and yeah but, talking about upcycling it reminds me of something so mm-hmm. yeah as you already said recycling is using it for the same thing upcycling is to convert it into something new which might uh, which we might use so another added advantage of that is you can convert it it increases your possibilities right let's say you have uh, some yeah. if you might not use it for the same purpose but uh, you might have so many other uses for it right so as like you opening more doors for example if you have like old you know bags and all you can convert them into clothes as well yeah so, and you can you can also convert your clothes into bags you know back and forth. yeah exactly exactly so yeah so 
use is uh, you know, when one use is no more usable you go to the other and then you can exactly and back. these are two different completely different and opposite fields and you can't even imagine you know interchanging this and that, that is yeah, actually exactly. possible yeah. all you yeah, need yeah. to do is have that perspective yep have the perspective you know and you know just a little bit of thinking of what you can you know use it for other exactly. than because if you think about it anything and everything can be upscaled or recycled reuse yeah anything i mean even if you see even if it's not your own stuff you know there's a construction going on near you or someone yeah. renovating their house they've removed all their pipelines okay and replaced with yeah. new ones use those pipelines as let's say maybe drip irrigation systems for your garden you can correct, use them correct, for true. hydroponics if the pvc pipes yeah. that are so lots of stuff like that can be used again i mean you have an old sink let's say that has that you know has a little bit of rust here and there so you can't actually use it for washing your vessels or something yeah so you're replacing that sink so use that sink as let's say a small fish pond or correct you, exactly you know, yeah there some plants in there too as simple as that or maybe yeah, that's if you actually use something like that, just fill it with just fill it with a little bit of water and make it a bird bath yeah that's that's yeah that's also possible you can do anything basically yeah uh, there's infinite possibilities everywhere if you have like old printers lying around just you can convert them into a pot basically yeah anything that can hold some soil can be a pot i mean just yeah. to make sure it's it doesn't have any toxic materials in it but yeah otherwise yeah exactly yeah can soil can be a pot this way you can also you know use all your plastics and all that you can put it to good use and yeah that would be doing a part for nature right so these little steps will play yeah, a I crucial mean, role if you if you let's say you got a you know box of mangoes and it has all those you know paper um, shredded yeah, paper and paper. Paper. yeah you can use that as a mulch in your pots which is going to protect yeah. the soil just put it around Correct. the base of your pot and it's going to protect your soil it's going to yeah. reduce uh, evaporation from the soil and stuff like that so lots of uses yes. for even those kind of things there's so many things you can talk about it for days decades oh yeah there's that much available out there but the only thing is you know getting into the lifestyle getting into this journey because once you do that you don't even need any assistance if you ask me because you will start yep. discovering things on your own and at the same time you'll you'll also uh, add be adding your own creativity to it you know that is where upcycling really shines people use their creativity to build insane things and uh, put lot of things to good use and yeah so that is where you know this is like a unique uh, thing to everyone right gardening that's why i call it art because it's unique to it everyone definitely an art it's unique to everyone everyone has their own perspective of what exactly yeah. but the Not end goal the remains the same exactly we not only make out of waste let's say you go to buy something new before buying you can actually think for yourself like do you have anything else with which you can make the stuff you want to buy exactly yeah something which you can upcycle to make the thing that you're going to buy can you make it yourself yeah and you'll save so much money you'll save so many things there's 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 thousands of advantages and i don't even see a single disadvantage yeah other than the fact that it gonna, just needs your time it's going to be a great fun activity for us too i mean the one who's doing exactly it. yeah exactly and i feel this could be promoted more if you know uh institutes like schools colleges universities offices have you know uh, dedicated events uh, related to this yeah. you know let's yeah. say they have a you know a week dedicated for gardening and promotion of all these activities so that they can learn yeah, that would that would really be a great thing to see i mean even if yeah. we have to have like one and you know weekend. another great idea that i always had was you know you know making it mandatory in offices to have a plant on your desk and you have to take care of it that 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 would do a lot i mean even one plant per desk would still make it Quite same easy. with kids I mean, you know same with 
there are offices in Japan. I heard that grow their own food inside the office. Which yeah, is, correct. Which is a, 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 an amazing thing. I mean, so it would also act it's... as a great stress reliever, and uh, it would also be a good, you know, group activities because all these offices are always looking for group activities to increase oh, yes, their morale, and leadership, leadership, and yeah, it does definitely improve, you know, you know, team qualities. Yeah, but but yeah, it's good gardening. to see more people getting into this because I've seen a uh, lot of people enter this field. Lots of them, yeah. Lots. Of you them. know, because for us, I feel it is easier to understand because we are already a part of this. You know, uh, in terms of education and all that, yeah. we are already a part of this, so we see things. But you know, uh, uh, an average person who has never known about plants and all that might find it difficult, right? To grow and techniques this and that he might have a lot of questions in mind but uh, seeing all the huge influx of people entering the field uh, this lifestyle for their own betterment for the betterment of the environment people being vocal about it standing up it shows that uh, people want to change they want uh, the nature to thrive they want uh, a better planet so th- that's a good people sign i feel are, people are slowly getting hungry for green yeah exactly so yeah that kind of getting did they kind of getting to know the need of the environment as well as you know the beauty of it i would say yeah exactly yeah the thing is it has always been there we just overlooked <laughs> yeah just overlooked there's lots of you know and i feel you know nature has to be loved not for its economic importance not for its benefits that us we have as humans but for the very existence i mean exactly because thing in itself i mean exactly people, and we're a part of this we're a part of nature so yes if people just notice the beauty and notice the intricate details in the environment and stuff it itself yeah. is enough to you know all people and get them to you know do something towards it exactly the it. only thing is you just need to look you just need to have that open mind of entering this because i think uh, once you enter this lifestyle i don't think you'll ever go back or ever question this because i i've never seen anyone do that because once they enter they see they see the beauty of it they see the benefits of it they see how it heals them mentally physically and how uh, it's uh, advantages in every other aspect so so all you need to do is step up you know take the initiative if no one in your family is doing it you you can start it and they'll they'll soon see and they'll also you know become a part of it soon your neighbors might become a part of it your friends might become a part of it so it's a chain yeah well who wouldn't like to you know once you see someone else's house being green and beautiful exactly yeah. someone else grow their own produce it, I don't think anyone would not want to try it out themselves. Exactly, yeah. And I've seen greenhouses and like regular non-greenhouses, and trust me, greenhouses are. Uh, I don't know what changes uh, are there scientifically, but it's as soon as you enter them, you can feel the difference. You can definitely feel the difference in terms of you know aesthetic. or in terms of the quality of you know the environment the air and everything everything is just you know better yeah i mean plants also do release lots of you know stuff into the environment which yeah you know it, it tells our brain that that's where we belong exactly yeah because deep down yeah that's where we belong actually that's where we belong correct yeah that's correct So yeah that was all the things we had to discuss for this episode we we spoke a lot of about a lot of things about the environment we spoke a lot of things about growing plants and integrating them in our life from scratch we spoke about the importance of a green lifestyle we also spoke about managing hope in gardens about detoxification sustainability subsistence in hope reducing upcycling and reusing so i don't think there's anything else left to talk about for now Well, that was a very fruitful discussion. I would say. I was yeah, like, and thank you so much for coming to this episode, coming to my show, and talking, giving because I learned a lot of things, and I hope the people listening to it will learn something as well. 
and you'll get into this lifestyle philip was really we we really highlighted all the pros of it the beauty of thank it you. so yeah thank you so much arkesh for coming to my thank show you so thank you so much i don't think anyone else would have been a perfect uh, speaker for this particular episode wow i mean thank you <laughs> yeah so time. thank you so much and i hope we'll uh, do more episodes soon talking about other things you know Definitely. and also for those of you who don't know he's also an expert in insects you rare butterflies as well okay. so <laughs> that's a really cool uh, thing i would say because i don't know anyone who does that so <laughs> yeah we'll be back soon in a future episode and talk about that and but for now thank you so much for all the great knowledge you've given all the important points you've uh, shared or you for, thank you for sharing your perspective thank you for being on my thank show yeah so yeah that yeah. was that's it for today's episode and uh, more episodes will be coming soon and also you should check out my blog uh, the idlexcribblers.com and there's few blogs over there related to nature as well and there'll be a lot of things coming soon um yeah and i'll try to be more consistent now but for now thank you so much have a great day everyone thank you arkesh for being on the show till next time thank you bye